In the past 10 years, digital technology has taken over our lives and has changed the dynamics in which society functions. It has created a massive paradox of keeping us connected, yet very much apart. The HL extension for the cognitive approach focuses on exploring and learning the influence digital technology has on our cognitions and emotions. This chapter comes at a very critical time for all of us, with having to teach and learn online. On an average, most of us must be spending at least eight hours in front of a screen, if not more. I have to be honest and admit that I spend most of my waking hours in front of the screen either planning lessons, recording lectures, correcting papers, scrolling through my Instagram, responding to emails, conducting online counseling sessions, chatting with friends, and even playing League of Legends. This is far way more rather than I am really proud of, and it makes me wonder what the impacts of spending such long hours online has on me physiologically and even psychologically. The rationale behind increasing research and even introducing a chapter on the impact of digital technology is due to the increasing usage of it in our society. More and more services are becoming automated. From our study in the biological approach, we do know that the environment plays an integral role in our development, both physiology and psychologically. It is with this aim to understand these impacts that this unit is structured. The main focus of this unit is to understand the influence, both positive and negative, digital technology has on cognitive processing, reliability of cognitive processing, and emotions. It also looks at specialized research methods that have been put in place to investigate these phenomena. There isn't a whole lot of theory involved in this extension unit, rather a range of research either suggesting that digital technology aids and improves cognitive uh, cognitions, or there's a whole others that suggest that it harms or deteriorates our cognitive processing and ability. So because this, we, um, this topic is so relevant to our current situation, you will be working on it or going through it as an individual research project. And there will be five different submissions for this project, each of which will be graded. Don't worry, you will be given class time to work on these different components for the next month. And on the side, I will be creating essential understanding lectures. So again, like I said, don't worry, I will explain each part um, in detail each time you have a submission and you will be given ample class time for you to work on it, which also means that you need to capitalize on the time that is given to you in class so you don't feel burdened uh, in your personal time. So we can divide the project into three different phases. The first phase will involve um, you doing prelim oh my gosh, preliminary reading to choose a topic you are interested in. Once you've chosen a topic, you will prepare interview questions, which will ideally involve both close-ended and open-ended questions. You will then submit that interview to me, well, rather the interview plan to me, and I will review that and provide feedback on how you could improve the questions or if there is something that is missing that you could add, okay? Once all the changes have been made and I have finalized your interview, you will conduct the interview on five different people from school. Again, this cannot be people who are in your psychology class. Um, I think the SL students could be potential interviewees, but I would prefer if you conduct it on people outside of our psychology class, okay? So you will record these interviews, uh, all five of them. You will voice record them or video record them, whichever you prefer and whichever your participant prefers, and you will submit them to me, okay? Um, again, I will go over the deadlines and stuff next class. For now, I just want you to understand the project. Uh, once you have gone over the interviews, or have submitted them to me, you will go over them yourself, okay? And you will try figuring out what these interviews really mean, okay? Are there any common uh, phenomena or um, impacts that you can see between your participants? And are there hypotheses that you can make based on the interview? So once you've gone over and listened to these interviews and figured out the common pieces and the common uh, phenomena, you will be writing a report 
basically about 500 words on the results that you got or the understanding that you got from these interviews, okay? Um, based on that, then you will go further into the research process. So as we know, there's qualitative and quantitative research. And what really happens in the process of research is that researchers usually start with qualitative research, okay? Because there isn't anything existing in the past or there's limited research in that area. So you start with qualitative research and you understand basic ideas around that topic. And once you've understood and found commonalities in different participants or different areas, you can then start making hypotheses, okay? So if you're looking at mental health, okay, um, the impact of digital technology on mental health, um, based on your research, you can maybe find that mental health uh, improves with digital technology because it's connecting people. If that is the trend or pattern that you see, you will do further research, which was then going to be your phase two. You will do further research in the area and see how digital technology can have a positive impact on mental health. Okay, and based on that further research, you will do an annotated bibliography of at least five researches. Okay, I will again explain what annotated bi bibliography is later on as we near that part of the um, project, but it basically involves you reviewing five different researches that have been conducted on, let's say, for example, going back to my example, which is positive effects of digital technology. Okay. Once you've done this annotated bibliography, based on your understanding from this, you will go into phase three and you will devise a research proposal, okay? And this research proposal, I want it to be um, feasible, okay? Feasible and directed towards our school community and our school population, okay? So you should be able to conduct it in school with the resources that will be available to us, okay, with the participants that are available to us. So conducting an fMRI or MRI will obviously not be possible. So we need to look at the limitations that we have to work within. And this is going to be helpful because we, right after we return in April, we will be going right into our um, in internal assessments. So you will have to think in terms of what is possible to conduct in school. Okay, and I also want to extend the opportunity of um, choosing one of these researches. So of all the proposals that we have, one or two research proposals, if I really think that they are promising, you can have the opportunity of actually conducting it in school. Okay, again, there will be logistics involved, such as getting parental consent and consent from Bob. Apart from that, I want you to have the opportunity of actually conducting this research in school, okay? I will be working with you the whole time. We will work on it as a team, and you could also have the um, potential to publish this paper. And that is really important or a major plus that you can include in your CV, in your college applications, um, and also if I'm writing your recommendation letter, that gives me even more to talk about with my experience conducting research with you. So if we really ideally come to a position where there is a promising research proposal, I would love to conduct it, um, but this is outside this project in itself, okay? So the phase three, the first part will be devising or putting together a research proposal that can be conducted in school with the materials that will be available in school and the population in school. Okay, and the final part will be to come up with an infographic, okay, um, which will be on the positive and negative impacts of technology on your chosen topic. So if it's on mental health, you will do positive and negative impacts of technology um, on mental health, okay. And again, I will go over and I will give you rubrics and examples for each of these phases, um, as we go on, I don't want you to look at it as a huge chunk, but we will divide it up in the next month and it shouldn't be too much of a problem and you will get class time. So for now, what I want you to do for the rest of class is go onto Padlet and you will reflect on your personal experience with technology, 
okay? And write three things that you think are positively impacting you, uh, well, three things that are a positive impact of technology in your life in terms of psychology. It could be with attention, learning, uh, connectivity, emotions, whatever it is, your relationships. So po three positive impacts and three negative impacts, okay? So you will do that first, and then you will go into... Um, the team's files, and you will find Launchpad articles, okay? There's a list of articles in that file. Um, choose one that could be of interest to you and start reading up on that. This can give you some lead on what topic you want to explore. If you think none of those articles in that file are of, are of any interest to you, you can just Google search the area of interest, okay? For example, if you want to study um, video games and aggression, then you could do further research because I don't think that's one of the articles that I have provided. Okay, um, I hope this was not too overwhelming. Again, I will provide you a deadline timeline tomorrow um, and I will also be providing you a mark scheme for each of these parts and there will be video lectures or video um, explanations for each part. For now, just read up um, on possible articles and think of a topic that you might be interested in or an area that you might be interested in. This could be mental health, this could be relationships, this could be bullying, this could be um, improvement of cognitive ability, attention, learning, decision making, all sorts of things. Okay, so it is really up to you. While I want you to think outside the box, our box is as big as AIC. So please keep that in mind. Okay, um, okay, all right.